Wiggle. Ableton Live version 9 really cemented Live's position as a premium workstation. It had an improved audio engine, improved instruments, effects and key workflow improvements to place it right at the top of the food chain when it came to music production, let alone live performance. And with version 9.5, Ableton set the bar even higher. But most programs were used to seeing very minimal and incremental improvements with different versions. 1.2.3.4 might just have different bug fixes in response to people's feedback online. But with 9.5, Ableton have really lifted the lid on what they've been working away on in the past year. So, let's dive in and take a look at what you can expect to see in Live 9.5. First up is something that might seem like a small change to the look and feel of Ableton Live 9.5, but it's something which makes quite a big difference to me in workflow. As you might know from my introductory course with Subbase, I'm quite particular about colouring my tracks as I add and group them together. And what Ableton Live 9.5 now does is automatically colours your new track. So I add a new track, it's given it yellow, blue, darker blue darker blue again, different tealy blue, it's really going for the blues here, and a pink here. And that kind of frees you up from having a little pink straight away, you know, oh, I want to color this, you know, breakbeat pink, this breakbeat yellow and the hi-hat green. Now you can still do that obviously, but when you're just working really quickly with an idea, you can go back and make those changes yourself if you want to, but this kind of gets the ball rolling. So what also happens here is if I load in a clip, I have given any new samples or clips, works with MIDI clips too, on these tracks, I give them the same color as they've got up here. So every clip has been given the same color as the track it's being dragged to, which is very neat. Obviously, once again, you can change the colors of those clips if you wish. But um, it's a really great and neat way to keep everything visually distinct from each other. So another neat tip is if we group this track, say we're going to name this beat one and group this with itself. So there's just one track in here. I call this track or this group beats group or bus or whatever you want. Any new tracks that I make in this group retain the same color. So that's a really handy thing for keeping that group distinctive from the rest of your set. So if you don't like it, of course, control or command and comma, bring up the look and feel and turn off auto assign track colors here. And you can set a default track color for newly added tracks. Um, but to be honest, I find it great and anything that you want to change other than that, you can always go back and change after the fact. So it's a really simple and easy way to keep things clean and neat while you're working and it means you don't have to slow down your workflow at all. Great little feature that I really, really am getting quite a lot of use out of, really loving it. The newly improved waveform rendering in Ableton Live 9.5 is a subtle but very important upgrade. It's similar to how listening to music on bad monitors is fatiguing. Looking at badly rendered waveforms, you might have never even noticed before, but it is fatiguing on the eyes eventually. But these new waveforms, when you zoom right in, you've got these smooth, nice curves that really make dealing with waveforms much more pleasurable. And these waveforms are improved in both the wave views or if you load in a sampler and drag one of these guys down here, you'll see that these waveforms are nice and smooth too. You've got those kind of new smooth balanced curves everywhere you want to look at them. I'm not gonna load in a new simpler now because I'm gonna save that for last. It's one of the best new additions to 9.5. The next big deal in Live 9.5 is RMS metering. And previously in Ableton Live, you could only see peak level metering. But if we play this clip here, so we've got a dim green, which is the peak level. It's peaking here at about minus three. And then we've got a brighter green RMS level here, which is coming up to only about minus 12. And what RMS metering does is it shows you the root mean squared 
amplitude level over time and that means that's the kind of average volume level of that track or that clip so that gives you a better overall feel for how loud that sound sounds to your ears so although the peaks of the transients are important this is where it's topping out this is the overall balanced level of that track and how it appears to be so it's great for you know kind of mixing by eye sometimes if you just want to get overall balanced levels of a few different tracks around about the same so they play nice together you don't want to just concentrate on the peak level obviously you're going to use your ear more but it's a great way to just get an, a, a quick kind of look and feel for how your tracks are balanced towards each other and this rms metering happens all throughout live if i drag an eq in here you'll see i've got a small little rms bright green level meter here and i've got the dim green peak level meters this one so rms metering is something that after you've had it for a couple of hours you'll wonder how you did without it it's really really great for giving you a better overall picture of the levels of your audio next up let's take a look at the awesome new analog model filters by cytomic now cytomic is the same guy andy simper who designed the glue compressor which is an indispensable new effect with live 9 and he takes things even further with an analog model filter range in live 9.5 so let's just say we want to make something a bit more gnarly and it's something which might not have a filter attached to it. So I've just got a little grand piano riff here. A little break behind it. So I'm going to load in an auto filter. I'm going to put a limiter behind it here. Now the new analog model filters are available in simpler, sampler, auto filter, and operator so you can see I've just dragged in an auto filter here and it's set to this clean mode so in this it's the same auto filter that we know and love but if we drop this down you can see we've got four new filters to select so we've got OSR which is modeled on the British Oscar filter in the Oscar synths the filters in the Korg MS20 a new analog model filter which isn't based on any particular hard synth but uh, contains characteristics of I think the MS2 and Oscar synths and we've got the PRD which is the Moog Prodigy filter so all of these have different characteristics my fa personal favorite being the MS20 you can hear it's a lot more gnarly the resonance goes up a lot higher and it actually self oscillates creating a, a note of its own now, if we want to add some extra filth to these filters, we've got a drive control here on all these filters. You'll see as I go down through them, the drive is available, but not in the clean mode. So only the analog modeled versions. So let's drive this. Give it a bit of envelope. See, we've got some gnarliness which just was not available in the previous clean mode. You can hear how tame that sounds now compared to our MS20 with the drive up. This is why I've had to have a limiter just behind it because it really does crank. Another new thing that we've got available in our auto filters is if we go down here to our filter modes, we've got the standard low pass, high pass, our band pass. Now the Oscar is only available in band pass because the MS20, the Prodigy and the PSD filters don't have a band pass mode available. We've got our notch. But then we've got this new one down here which is a morph filter and can morph between characteristics of all the filter types so let's go from say a bit mid-range we'll morph between low pass to band pass to high pass and then we've got a notch coming in at the end back to low so you can get some really interesting effects, particularly on drums, I quite like it.
this coupled with an LFO. You can get some quite interesting effects. But to be honest for me, it's all about that MS-20 with drive. Or the move on as well. Remember to put a limiter after this if you're going to crank it like that as well. Or at least some compression. Because it really does get very snarly. Yep, gotta love those new filters. Go to town on those, they really are amazing. You can just drag one of those auto filters after any kind of dead sounding sample and just bring it straight into the analog world. And last but not least in Live 9.5, we've got the new Simpler. The Simpler has been redesigned and the new way in which it operates links quite well to the Ableton Push 2, which we'll get into on a later video. But as you can see, when you drag one in, it's been redesigned on the front face. You've got three different areas on the left hand side, which are the different play modes the Simpler operates in now. You've got a classic mode, which most resembles the previous Simpler. And that is great for uh, polyphonic pads. Let me just load in something that's a bit more suitable. So that resembles the old simpler classic mode. You can do everything you could do. You can loop it. Let's see, fade, same as you always could. But you'll note on the right hand side here, you've got the ability to warp that. So we can use any of the normal algorithms from Ableton to make polyphonic pads match in length. So it can be quite handy if you're doing something that is rhythmic and you want those rhythms to match up. So you had a vocal sample and you wanted them to, to chop up or let's say you've got an arpeggio here. So you can see the timing matches exactly, just like anything being warped in Ableton. Now just be a little bit careful. If you're using Complex Pro, you can see if I'm playing just a triad here, or a three note chord, my processor power has jumped up to 14, 15%, and I'm on a top of the range laptop here. If I go back down to Beats, you see I'm not troubling the processor at all, it's on 1%. So it is important to be a little bit careful Although the warp modes are amazing on Simpler, just be mindful that they can't sap your processor power. So if you're playing some um, you know, quite complex chords, maybe you're playing a couple of octaves, uh, you're really going to start to eat up that processor power. But it is still amazing to have at your fingertips. Next, you've got one shot mode, which is great for beats. So let's say we load in just a little drum loop here. So it's great for triggering beats. Now, if I hit that once, it's going to play right to the end. Now we change our end marker, obviously. And if we only want the playback to happen while we're holding our pad, you change it onto gate. Got a snap mode as well, which helps you snap to zero crossing levels in the sample. Obviously, you can turn that off if you want to get nitty gritty. If you really want to get nitty gritty with your sample editing, click on this arrow here. We've got a new zoom mode for your waveform, which as you can see, combined with the new way of rendering waveforms in Ableton 9.5, is a really beautifully smooth representation of your waveform. Also, when you open up the waveform to the top window, you've got this new portion down here where the filter is on the left hand side. We've got our envelopes here on the right. You've got everything right in front of you. But if you move this back down in to the simpler, you've got to go to your controls menu to see that. You can see there's also an upgrade button here. When I click on upgrade, this simpler will no longer really be compatible with previous versions of Live. And you've got a couple more options down here, which are the filters which we covered in the last option or last part of this video. If we go off our clean filter, we've got all our lovely analog model filters by Cytomic again. 
Um, as I've mentioned, I'm quite in love with the MS-20. Lovely sound and filters. So, turn it off for now. We've got our slice mode. This is our last mode that we have to look at, and this is really amazing. That's something that if you're used to other um, DAWs or other drum VSTs, it might not be the, the most amazing thing in the world, but to have it natively built into a DAW such as Ableton, it really is amazing. And when you use it combined with the Push 2 or other pad-based controllers, it really comes into its own. So I've got this in slice mode now, which is great for loops, and it's cutting it up based on the transients in the waveform. Now you can see there's a couple of options here. We've got sensitivity, and obviously playback mono or polyphonic, or through mode. If I change the sensitivity down, it picks only the larger transients. So So very handy just for some on-the-fly drumming, some MPC style stuff. Um, if you want to change the sensitivity up, you get those other smaller transients being brought into the mix. So let's have a look at some of the other center console features here. I'm just going to load in our more tonal patch, the choir one we were using earlier, and go back onto our classic mode so we can play some polyphonic pads. So let's throw on a loop and we can snap it and fade it so we get a nice little loop. And let's look at one of the new features, a glide mode. So if you hold down your original note and play the next note, you'll glide up. Something I'm sure you're all familiar with, but nice to have it included. And let's take a look at our pitch envelope. And once again, I'm sure you're all familiar with this, but also something interesting we can show. Let's increase our decay. Turn our glide off. Okay, if we have a rhythmic patch, you'll hear this a little bit better. I'll turn on the ARP Cordy. If I turn Warp off and have a, a loop on this patch, you'll hear that they all take different lengths of time to get to that sustained note. So let me just loop maybe the last part. So. If I want them all to warp and reach that sustain note together in unison. You're here engaging in warp mode, makes them all in sync. Now obviously you might not want that to happen, so you'd take warp off, but it's great to have it as a feature once again. So let's go back to our nice pad sound, and we'll take a look at our other options down here. We'll have a look at our LFOs, turn our filter back on, loop it again, Let's see, and listen to those lovely MS-20 filters at work again. And you've got all your other LFO controls here. Left hand side we've got our filter envelopes. And we've got our amplitude envelopes over here on the right again. So as you can see, lots of new tricks to learn and love in Simpler in Live 9.5. So that's about it for what's new in Live 9.5. You can check out more tutorials from myself, Phil Misk, on subbasedj.com. Thanks for watching.